Welcome to this short video on Poser Physics 2012. Poser Physics 2012 is the latest version of Poser Physics for Poser, and it has basically been rewritten um, to take uh, take advantage of all the new interface options for Poser 9 and Poser Pro 2012. Poser Physics is a physics simulator, so it is a rigid body dynamics system, but it's also got incorporated into it a ragdoll system. So when you have a figure in the scene, it automatically builds a ragdoll from it and incorporates that into the physics scene. Um, it runs on a Poser 32-bit and 64-bit, and it runs under the Mac and PC. It is incredibly easy to use. Um, and I will we'll now show you a couple of scenes just to demonstrate some of the options in Poser Physics. So I've got a fairly simple scene here which has got a staircase and two cubes. Uh, one cube down the bottom and one cube up the top which is slightly smaller than the one down the bottom. These, are, these props have all come from the standard uh, Poser props. To run Poser Physics, we go into the Scripts menu and under Poser Physics, select the Poser Physics option and we get a fairly simple screen here. So there are two tabs to this window. There's the simulation settings on the left and on the right are the prop figure settings. So the simulation settings on the left, um, they're fairly self-explanatory. They're whether or not you want a ground plane in the physics simulation. So that means if a, if a box is falling, is it going to hit the ground and bounce or not? Um, which is the start frame for your scene. There are the joint hardness and collision joint stiffness parameters are for ragdolls and they're explained in the documentation. And there are the number of physics scene simulations per poser frame and you generally wouldn't need to change that. And there's a verbose output where if you tick that, you'll get a whole lot of debug information if you're trying to understand in more depth what's happening with the scene. And there's the run simulation button, which, which runs the simulation. So as an example, if we run the simulation now, you can see the top box fell down the stairs and hit the bottom box and, and kept going. If we move to the prop figure settings, You'll see that the current box, which is up the top of the stairs, is box number one. And we have a whole bunch of options for it. So we can exclude it from the simulation. And then when we run the simulation, it doesn't fall. If we include it in the simulation, we can indicate if it's not going to move, if it's movable, if it's keyframed or if it's keyframed until it's hit by another object. So if we make it immovable and run the simulation again, nothing will happen. If we go back and make it movable, which is the default, and run the simulation, you'll see it runs down the stairs. We can control the density of that box. So at the moment it's got a density of 100 and the bottom box also has a density of 100. If we change the top box's density to 1000, it will be much heavier, so it should put Bang! Okay, so you can see that the bottom box, because it had such a light density, when the top box hit it, was very heavy and, and, um, and sent it off the scene. If we move that back to 100 and rerun the scene again, that's the default action. If we set the density to 1, the top box will be very light and won't move the bottom box at all. We can also change the bounciness. So if we make the bounciness very high, that top box will bounce off the bottom box. And if we make the, bounce, the bounciness very low, this isn't a particularly good example, but you'll see it'll sort of thud into the box. We can con also control the shape of some of the objects in the scene. We'll now move on to ragdoll physics. To demonstrate 
ragdoll physics in poser physics. I've just built a very, very, very simple scene here with James in it. James is standing. And if we run the physics simulator just on James standing there, we would expect James to drop to the ground as a as a ragdoll. So we you can see when we select James, he is movable and his shape is a ragdoll. So when we run the simulation, you can see that he crumples to the ground. Now, James fits very well into the ragdoll bone structure mechanism. Some of the newer figures are a little bit more complex, so they, whilst they still work very, very well with ragdolls, um, I've just found that James and some of the earlier figures um, are a bit more physically uh, realistic. I've now added a ball to the scene and we're going to use the ball to apply a force onto James. So if we look at the figure settings, I'll just click on James here and you can see that he is movable, so he'll have gravity applied to him. We will apply gravity to the ball as well. And if we run the simulation now, both James and the ball should drop to the ground, as they do. What we'll do now is just clear out that animation by setting start frame to zero and back to 40. Now, if we change the prop settings of the ball from movable to being keyframed, then we can send the ball through space and say by frame 20, have the ball over here. You can see that the ball is moving through space there. So the ball should hit James. So we've got James set to movable. We've got the ball set to keyframed and we run the simulation. Okay, you can see the ball sort of hits James in the head a little bit late. We'll just set the ball at, let's say, down and a bit further right. And we'll run the simulation again. And you can see the ball really hits James there. So one of the other neat things that we can do with poser physics and I'll, again, I'll just cancel out that animation, is we can say that a particular figure is keyframed until it's hit by a physics object. So if we select James and say that James is keyframed until he is hit, and we can say the ball is keyframed, then when the keyframed ball passes through James, and we'll set, say, at frame 20 the ball out here when the when the ball hits James about there it should convert James to a rag doll and apply um, physics from then on so we run the simulation and you can see the ball hit James and then and then send him through the air so there's all sorts of really neat things that you can actually do with that ability so that's a very 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 quick rundown on poser physics um, I'll finish this video by just running through some of the sample scenes that you get with Poser Physics. Here we have the bowling ball example where um, a bowling ball gets run down a ramp and along the ground and hits the 10 pins. In this example, we've got James keyframed until hit, uh, sorry, keyframed until hit, leaping through the air at three boxes on the ground here. This rather gruesome example has Jesse falling from a great height.
This is a really neat example of um, using a Python script to run Poser Physics, and there's documentation on how to do that. You can see I've got a ramp here, which is a stationary object, and I've got a motor car here with four wheels or two wheels. And instead of running the Poser Physics GUI, we run a Python script. And you can see the car hits the ramp and falls on its nose. But really neat way of um, doing some more complex scenes. In this scene here, I've modeled a very, very, very simple pool table. And this particular ball here is um, keyframed to hit the other nine balls um, as you would on a pool table. So it's very, very simplistic, but it gives you an idea of what you can do. Poser Physics 2012 is due out um, sometime in April in 2012 from the Smith Micro website. So um, look out for it there. Thanks for watching.